Hello everyone. So the third method and the uh, averaging methods for the time series and analysis is the exponential smoothing. So we started with a very simple method, knife forecast. We talked about moving average and weighted moving average. So in all those methods, when it comes to predicting for future, we were only relying on the actual demand from the previous period. However, exponential smoothing is a bit more sophisticated in that sense. So when it comes to exponential smoothing, the new forecast is based on actual demand as well as the forecast for the previous period, which makes it more reliable, more effective matter than the other matters we discussed previously. It's widely used in industry and it's simple to use, it's not complicated. So there are different variants of exponential smoothing, single exponential smoothing, double exponential smoothing, triple exponential smoothing. So in this course, we are only focusing on single exponential smoothing. So which means the method we're going to use for exponential smoothing can only work effectively with a time series which is stationary, without trend, without seasonality, which only represents random variation. So when it comes to dealing with trend and seasonality, then we use double exponential smoothing and triple exponential smoothing. Okay, so don't worry about that. We will only stick to the single exponential smoothing. So which means we are only dealing with the time series at this point, which doesn't have any trend or seasonality. So before we go to any explanation, I want to write down the formula for exponential smoothing here. So prediction for the period T is going to be alpha. Alpha is a smoothing constant, A T minus one. So actual demand from the previous period plus 1 minus alpha ft minus 1. So this is the forecast from the previous period. So if I want to predict for let's say period 12, f12, it will be alpha a11 plus 1 minus alpha f11. So it is not only I need to know the actual for the previous period, but also I need to know the forecast for the previous period. So the data collection requirement is increased, right? So as we add more parameters to our forecasting model, your data collection requirement will increase, which means your forecasting cost is likely to increase too. Okay, so let's explore this a little bit, then we'll look into one example. The value of alpha can be anything between zero to one, okay? So larger the smoothing constant or the value of alpha, so which means as we approach towards one, so we will be giving higher weight to the actual demand, right? So as we have value of alpha as 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, we are more responsive to the actual value or the actual demand. So whenever there's a loss of random variation in time series, you want to use higher value of alpha so that you can be more responsive uh, to the actual. So smaller smoothing constant as we approach towards zero, values like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it smooths out the random variation. With the lower value of alpha, we are giving less emphasis of the most recent demand, but more emphasis to the forecast, right? So which kind of let, leads to smoothing out uh, the prediction. So if I just want to plot it for a hypothetical time series with the lower value of alpha, you will have something like this. However, if you have larger value of alpha, your time series is going to be more erratic, right? So because you are responding much more quickly to the actual demand. So sometimes students ask, what if I use value of alpha as one? So let's see what happens if you use value of smoothing constant as one. So for F12, if I use value of alpha as one, it's going to be F12 equals to one into A11 plus one minus one F11. So it simply means forecast for the next period equals to the actual from the previous period. So you end up applying naive forecasting method. The value of alpha equals to one means you're using naive forecast, right? So that one was in the naive forecast. Ft equals to a t minus one, right? Similarly, if you put value of alpha as zero, you will end up using f12 equals to f11. So the forecast for next period is going to be same as forecast for the previous period. 
So that's why you're going to get a smooth or a constant line if you have value of alpha as zero. However, value of alpha equals to one, you will be mimicking exactly what's happening in the real life, right? So the time series will be more erratic. It's widely used in industry, easy to use. Oh yes, yeah, so one advantage over the weighted moving average, I don't need to worry about set of weights. We only have one weight, alpha. So I only need to determine the value of alpha instead of determining two or three weights for the weighted moving average, which makes the alteration to weights easier. I only change the value of alpha. So one minus alpha is adjusted accordingly. So again, for alpha, uh, as I said, the rule of thumb is if you want to closely mimic the actual demand, then we're going to use higher value of alpha. If we want to smooth out the time series, then we'll use the lower value of alpha, right? So that will determine. Uh, well, otherwise, depending upon the time series, the value of alpha will vary. But for the exam viewpoint, I will give you the value of alpha, and you're going to use that value of alpha to do the prediction. However, you must know what are the implications if you have a smaller value of alpha, if you have larger value of alpha. Okay, so there are two formulas for exponential smoothing. Both of these are going to produce same results. Most of my examples are around this formula, right? But feel free if you're comfortable using this formula, I'm okay with both. So before we apply the exponential smoothing formula, there's one more explanation I would like to dig into. Because sometimes students have a question why it is called exponential smoothing what gives it that name so let's look into that okay so let's explore why we call it exponential smoothing so here we want to use exponential smoothing to predict the demand for December right uh, so for December if I want to write the formula this is period 12 so I want to say f12 equals to alpha a11 actual from previous period 1 minus alpha f11 so i need to know the demand for the previous period as well as the forecast so this is f11 so if i don't have forecast for previous period i need to calculate for f11 so f11 is going to alpha a10 plus 1 minus alpha f10 and as goes on Right. So from here, what I can write is F12 alpha A11 plus 1 minus alpha alpha F alpha A10 plus 1 minus alpha F10. And it goes on. Then you substitute for F10, F9, and so on. Right. So once you solve this entire equation, what you will end up having, you will have alpha A11 plus alpha 1 minus alpha A10 plus alpha 1 minus alpha square A9 and so on. Alpha 1 minus alpha cube A8, 1 minus alpha to the power 4 a7 and so on so the idea here is as you move uh, further further into the period it is going exponentially right so that's why it is called exponential smoothing well we don't need to do all this derivation so this is just for your understanding why we call it exponential smoothing okay so let's stop with the theory and let's apply the exponential smoothing method to calculate the forecast for, for December so again I have period which is given here as months, actual demand, items sold. I'm going to add here another column. It is called forecast. And we want to calculate forecast for December using exponential smoothing. Given that the value of alpha, let's say as 0 0.4 and the forecast for F11 is let's say 15 units. So these values are given to you. So if I want to calculate forecast for F12, which is going to be 0 0.4 multiplied by 17, so which is actual, 1 minus 0 0.4 multiplied by 15. So in this case, 6.8 plus 9, which is going to be 15.8. So that's how you will apply the exponential smoothing. So here for the F11, the forecast was 15 
and for December the forecast is 15.8 let's look into one more example how you're going to start the calculations when forecast is not given for the previous period so in order to make our calculations a bit shorter I'm only going to predict up to April so I want to predict for f4 using exponential smoothing with value of alpha as 0 0.4 so let's add another column I'm going to call it forecast using exponential smoothing at 0 0.4 so when the forecast is not given for the very first period in order to start we're going to use naive forecast method so we're going to use naive forecast to get f2 the forecast for the first period which is f2 so the f2 is going to be two units now i know f2 i already know a2 a2 is 5 and i know the value of alpha which is 0 0.4 so from here we can calculate f3 so that's going to be 0 0.4 multiplied by 5 plus 1 minus 0 0.4 multiplied by 2 so we have the f2 f3 sorry as 3.2 so the forecast for March is 3.2 so now I know F3 and I know A3 so I can do F4 so alpha remains same 0 0.4 multiply by 10 actual for March 1 minus 0 0.4 multiply by 3.2 so that's going to be 4 this is going to be 1.92 which means 5.92 so for April we have 5.92 right okay so anyway so at this point we're only working up to March uh, sorry up to April right so however you'll follow same procedure in case I ask you get me the forecast for August or in this case for December right so you're going to start with uh, first period use the knife forecast to get F2 and do the calculations as you calculate forecast for each period right so give it a go do the manual calculation don't rely on excel all the time because in your exam you're going to get some manual calculations so you must be comfortable doing manual calculations so from this point let's go back to excel and let's apply exponential smoothing so here we have uh, exponential smoothing using 0 0.2 and 0 0.9 so let's say we want to calculate forecast for december so here in order to calculate for December I need to have forecast for the previous period the value of alpha is given so I'm going to start with period 2 so I'm going to apply naive forecast method so which means for period 2 it is going to be actual for period 1 so which is 2 and the forecast for period 3 is going to be 0 0.2 so which is value of alpha multiplied by actual for the previous period so which means actual for February in my case that's cell number B4 plus 1 minus alpha so 1 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by forecast for the previous period so which is forecast for February which we got for using knife forecast map so H4 so which gives me 2.60 and we can so once you select this cell this small dot on the right hand bottom corner take your cursor on that left click hold it and drag it down so the formula will be applied or will be copied to the next cell so for instance if we look for april then april is going to be 0 0.2 times b5 so b5 is the actual for march plus 1 minus 0 0.2 multiplied by h5 so h5 that we calculated as 2.60 and so on right so make sure if you are new to excel you don't know how to apply formulas so you may need to spend a bit of time on this try applying these formulas individually for each cell so that it makes more sense for you guys and then give it a go for value of alpha as 0 0.9 so when you apply 0 0.9 you will see that uh, the uh, the forecast you're going to generate it will be mimicking this time series more closely here you can see this time series or the forecast the, the the series we have generated using alpha as 0 0.2 is much more smoother right for instance here demand drops for 0 then again goes to 8 then 16 
However, these numbers are much more closer to the average value or to the average line. So that concludes the exponential smoothing. So you should be able to do the hand calculations as well as use the Excel to generate the forecast. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach me out. I will see you guys in next video. Thank you very much.